Hi there, so today we're going to be talking about navigating your way through chord changes as a soloist. This video is going to work for you, whether you're an absolute beginner, I'm going to teach you the scales that will help you get going as an improviser. Or if you're a more advanced player, I'm going to be talking about tactics and ideas, how to make your solos more interesting. Also, there's a version of this video for sale on my website, the link is below. You can watch it as many times as you like with no adverts and it includes the backing tracks that I use in this video plus some MIDI. So go and check that out if you want to study it deeply. All right, let's get cracking. So I'm essentially a blues player. All my playing is based around the blues scales uh, and then I frill it up a bit. So to show you the blues scale to start with, it's a great thing if you're just starting to solo, just learn this scale and straight away you can solo really on a very basic level. Um, the blues scale is based around the pentatonic scale and there's a minor pentatonic which if we're in the key of C is this and if we're in the major key is this so to turn the minor pentatonic scale into a blues scale all you do is add a flattened fifth in this case a G flat As your minor blues scale. In a major key you add a flattened third which would be an E flat in the key of C. Those are your basic blues scales. Just practice it to start with in the easy keys but then if you can try to learn it in every key. You'll save yourself a load of hassle later on honestly. I'm only telling you that because I didn't do that when I started playing. I got really good in the easy keys, but when it came to playing in A flat minor or E flat minor, I just couldn't really solo and it just, I had a barrier in my head, I just can't do it. But when I finally overcame that barrier, I realized, no, you can play in every key. You know, you just got to really learn that key, that's all. And if you do it all at the beginning, make life a lot easier for yourself, trust me, later on. Okay, so I've knocked up a little chord sequence here. Have a listen. Okay, so it's F minor 9, B flat 11, G minor 7, and like a C11. Same again, except the second time it alters on the C you get like a C7 with a raised fifth and a flat ninth. So as a beginner you might think okay so how am I going to solo over that? The first one is F minor so B flat G minor C You don't need to do that. You don't need to follow each chord. What you need to do is find the tonal center for the sequence. The tonal center is like the fundamental tone that runs through every piece of music has one. Um, and the way to find it, a good way often is to think how you would end, how you would resolve that sequence. So if you were playing this song and you had to think of an ending, It's that satisfying end chord and that's usually will give you the clue of what to play in. In this case it's E flat or C minor, whichever they're related. C minor is the relative minor of E flat. So I can play in E flat basically over these changes or I can use the C minor blue scale that we've talked about. It's always going to sound okay if I play the blues in C minor over this sequence because the tonal center is E flat or C minor.
basically just playing the blues scale there really um and throwing in a few little frills now and again i'm diverting from it and observing the chord changes you know so instead of always just playing the blues scale you know i'm just there going into a g minor nine c altered and then back to the blues And as your knowledge of music increases, you'll be able to throw in more of these things. You know, you just learn them bit by bit and add them. So as I say, I start with a blue scale and just add, learn, learn, learn more little things that you can throw in that will make it more interesting than just playing the blue scale. But a great starting point, blue scale and find the tonal center. Okay, so I've got a simple chord sequence here, A minor nine and D minor nine. <laughs> The tonal center in this case is the first chord, which is A minor. Obviously, you can never take that for granted, but it does feel like if you're going to resolve it. You'd go back to that A minor 9, so we know it's the tonal center. So I'm going to basically play an A minor. Uh, but what I'm going to do is imagine that there's another chord in there as well, because it could go. Imagining these chords that relate to the sequence can give you more things to play. So instead of just having these two chords to play with, I can add in this one, which is uh, an E7 with a like a flattened ninth and a raised fifth. It's like an altered chord, and it just gives me more vocabulary, even though it doesn't actually exist in the chord sequence. This is the way I sometimes think of it. just gives you more to play with you know um, it's another little idea another thing is try not to think in terms of scales and chords sometimes if you can obviously you've got to observe the key that you're playing in and the chords you're playing in but if you can try and play ideas you'll be a much more interesting soloist you know it doesn't have to be flash you can just come up with great melody lines and you'll get people um, and I think if you think in terms of melody your solos will be more interesting, you know. Find a little melody. And then expand on it. It's the same as writing a song, you want to have a cool melody to listen to. I think for me, listening to a solo, the best ones are the ones that have, you know, great little lines that hook you in. Um, I heard Greg Fillingaines talking about uh, playing, I think it's Ruby Ruby, the solo, it's something like... Something like that. And anyway, in his head was... Um, I think it was, uh, what was it? The Kinks. Hey, you really got me going. You got me da -da 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 -da. That was what was in his head. The other thing is just extending the chords that are already there, you know, with your solo. So even though it's just A minor and D minor. That's where you're just adding these extra chords, uh, making it feel a lot more complex and giving you more stuff to play with. Sometimes it's nice as well to be chordal with your solo. You know, you don't always have to be playing a lick. 
I really enjoy playing close clusters when I'm soloing sometimes. So I might start with a lead line. You know, so it's just kind of giving you another language, another colour again. Because I think a lot of people, when you first get a solo and someone says, OK, play a solo, what you do, the first bar, you're like... And then it's like, oh, OK, I, now I've played everything I know. <laughs> what am I going to do for the other 14 bars? So that's a, why, in a way, it's good to pace yourself when playing a solo. You know, I think it can really raise anticipation when it's your turn to solo. Starts the beginning of the sequence and you don't play anything for a bar. And then suddenly everyone's sort of looking at you like, oh, why is he not playing? You've got their attention and then you can draw them in, you know, with very sparse, minimal beginning to your solo. So like if you're... Uh, Again, let's do a different key, uh, G minor. So the group's vamping along. Just let it breathe. So you're, you're building, you're building, you're getting to a destination, you know, and when you get there, that's where you have to make sure you don't run out of steam, you know, so don't just burn off all your licks straight away. Climb up, build it, build some anticipation, get some excitement going. Then you can, you know, once you're up there and it's burning, you could just be rhythmic for a while if we're playing a groove kind of tune, you know what I mean? That kind of vibe, you know, just really builds excitement. You know, you're not doing anything that's incredibly pyrotechnic in terms of licks um, or reharmonization or anything. You're just building excitement vibe, you know, making people feel like, yeah, come on, I'm into this. That's my approach to soloing. You know, get the excitement going, get, engage your audience, draw them in. And then whatever you're going to do, you know, just try to make it something that's going to capture them and lift them up, you know. Or if you're going to go weird, go weird. You know, let's, uh, let's go to another key, F minor. You could, you know, just take it. It, it might have been a, a very straightforward F minor to B flat. But then you can take it at left field when you start playing your solo. You know, you can you can take it wherever you want to take it. You just got to do it with confidence, you know, grab it by the throat and really go for it. Don't be wishy-washy, you know, have a vibe in your mind. OK, I'm going to I'm going to do this. You know, it doesn't have to be you don't have to go guns blazing, you know, amazing licks. Yeah, of course, there's there's always someone that can do it better. You know, I can try and do that. And then I listen to Corey Henry and go, blimey, I can't do that. It doesn't matter because I'm me. He's him, you know, and. We, we've all got our own personality with soloing. I think that's a lovely thing about it. You can find different ways to shine. You know, look, look at Bill Evans, the piano player, one of my favourite piano players. He wasn't really an amazing monster player. He was very understated, but he, he had his own style that was unmistakable and people loved him for it.
Well, there you go. I hope you got something from this. Um, I'll probably do more tuition about this in the future. In the meantime, take care of yourself.